last time on Boat Build. All right, so that was awesome. We did that in an hour. Now, we don't want to tell everybody that they can drop their prop <laughs> off here and have it done in an hour. I'm with you there. But let's look at some of these big boys. This, I feel like I have prop in me here. This is Boat Build. All right, Mike, tell me, tell me about the business here. How long have you been here? You service the fishing community here as well, right? Yes, uh, we provide service for both the pleasure boarders and the commercial fishing fleet. Uh, we started 18 years ago. A gentleman named Lars hooked up with me and uh, supported this business right from the beginning. He, uh, he's been the financial backer to this, and his experience on the waterfront has brought a lot of commercial work in here. Um, my experience hands-on has continued to get us going and keep us going. I provide a lot of service for the fleet here and uh, we're providing service for boats from as far away as New Jersey right now and as far north as Maine. So it's covering the east coast here quite well. So tell me about repairing a propeller versus buying new. So anybody who even thinks, their let's say they say my propeller's done. Right. Uh, which which ours we thought was yes you feel they should bring it by you and have it absolutely uh, some things are not as bad as people think they are and others are worse I do know that the bigger props are not readily available so repair is pretty much uh, an essential sure. the smaller ones you assess the value and the cost of repair and let the customer make that decision so this is this some artistry of this, right? I mean, I mean, the guy who has been doing it for a while, <laughs> you have to have a feel for it, sort of a knack right, and a touch. Right. There, there's certainly um, tools for the trade that uh, maintain uh, consistency, which is what you're trying to do. You're trying to provide a product that's going to uh, push the boat well mm -hmm. and um, no vibration and give it um, maybe some extra material for thickness, which would make it last a little bit longer too. And when a commercial guy goes down, he's gonna get backed up quick. Yeah, the, uh, the industry is pretty much regulated by days at sea and uh, it's, it's interesting how the competition is uh, a little different than years ago when they were going around the clock, but it's, uh, it's still a very good, uh, very good industry and uh, it's a money maker for them. And, it works well for us. Now what about this? Now this is something, this is like something I want to hang on my wall as a piece of art. Well, this is a prop that got serviced that came in in need of repair. It got welded and pretty much tuned up in the same order of events that you witnessed on yours. Just so the same the process. Kind of like on the grandest case. Exactly. exactly. So when you say uh, no prop too big or too small, you mean it, right? Pretty much, yeah. I mean, I've serviced I did uh, a fleet of tugboat wheels for a number of years out of Providence that were uh, 10 foot props that weighed 4,000 pounds. Wow. So you get something like this, you would think, how am I going to fix it? You can take care of it. Yes. Right? You'll bring that back. Absolutely. And so you would recommend having a spare <coughs> propeller so you're not putting the pressure on the technician. Right? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Marine propeller. Marine propeller service. I'm Mikkel. We're here to help you. Mikkel, thanks a lot. Man. Awesome. I appreciate it. This is Boat Build, right here at The Drift. Presented by Sociable, original social media programming.